Thanks, Mel. And hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm going to be using my camera in this portable computer. So if I put something up and you can't see it, let me know and I'll move it around a little bit. To start off with, I'm going to swing the, the camera around here to show you a little bit of my station. And this kind of leads to uh, what uh, where I began this whole process. A few years ago, I actually did a rebuild on this yard, the station. I'm going to be doing another one. And I have a, a shelf here that I have my K3 on, my uh, KPA 500, and the P3, and et cetera. And the problem I was running into was that every time that I wanted to change frequencies or bands, I'd end up having to reach for it. So my solution to that is... I ran across a article by a ham over in Eugene, uh, NK7Z, and he had been using the Genovation uh, control pad. And I'll put mine up here in a minute and let you look at that. Uh, the spinoff to it is, and I emailed uh, Dave back and forth several times and got an idea of what was going on. I have a neighbor a couple blocks away, and he actually has the uh, a Genovation unit, but it was an earlier version and he had to do a bunch of fancy programming and I didn't want to do that. And anyway, what Dave had come up with was to utilize the, uh, the Genovation unit and move it in, uh, tie it into the K3 and the P3. So what I did is I started looking at that. They come up with two models. They've got a, a 24 keypad and they got a 48. I chose the 48, and I'll show you the reason why. This is this is my keypad. I mean, look, did I get the position okay? Okay. Okay. What? Because I'm a county hunter, I do county hunting besides doing DXing, and, I, and Murph got me into the digital gig, so now I have to have the digital stuff on here. I went ahead and set set the program up so that I could set hit the keys and it automatically would shift to the frequencies that I was interested. So if I wanted to go to the county hunting frequency, I would hit the CH right here. This one right here, this there's a line that says CH, that's the county hunters. So I would hit that key and what it would do is immediately take me to the CW frequency on that band that we have the county hunters on. And then if I hit the alternate A, A1, A to B up here, it would kick it over to the sideband frequency that the county hunters are on. So that's how I kind of worked it out. My big thing was to make it easy. I wouldn't have to reach up all the time to the radio. So that was where I was going. And that was neat is when I want to go to FT8, I've got the digital frequencies all set up in here. And I just kicked that and immediately takes me to the the particular band and the frequency. What's interesting, you can program this up so that it immediately takes it to the frequency, the mode. You can set your filters that you want. So that's the way I set mine up, made it easy for me to use. Let's see, what else do I want to point out to? Oh, a couple things here. Because of the it's 48 keys, the memory that I have available going coming through the P3 is 50. So it means I can use I can use all the keys, which was good to me. And so I went ahead and set it up. I have two columns on here, or this row, pardon me, this row here and this row here. One's for CW, one's for sideband. And what I tried to do is to set the frequency up. So I hit the, on the CW, for instance, I would hit the low frequent, uh, like 14005. And then I would set another frequency on the CW on the, in the BVFO at 1450. So that way, when I get into a contest or I'm out uh, chasing after a DX station, I can uh, do the search and pounce thing. And that's kind of my mode when I do contesting. So I do the search and pounce. And that made it real easy. So I did that with several of the, all the frequencies through so I could do that. And even on sideband, I set it up for one frequency be the low end of the sideband frequency, and then I'd have one up towards the upper end. So that way, when I spin up, I can and I get to the end and I want to go back to the beginning. I just push the button and it takes me right back to the beginning. So I'm back on the lower frequency. And then if I wanted to uh, go back up to the upper end, because there's a guy up there, I want to work that I didn't, uh, didn't before, I could push that button and go. So that's what I've done here. Now, this is the 48 key. And like I say, they have a 24 key too. Now, what really caught my attention um, at the convention this year, there was an, uh, a John won it. It was an Elgato unit. 
and this is an article that shows what it looks like. It sets up and it's got backlit and it's got a bunch of other little features to it. So I see all sorts of promises with that. And as it turns out, there was a fellow, uh, w, W02X. He's written some programming using that red node. It was in the QST and then there was a, uh, but anyway, uh, Dave has gone through and he has done re actually written programs using the red node for the Genovation unit. So you use it with any of the radios or you can use the Genovation or the Selgato. And so there's some real promising things. It was a convenience that I was looking for because I can put this at the side of my station and just hit a button and immediately it takes the radio up there. One of the other features that I have in the uh, with my L-Craft gear is the, the K-Pod. And I put those up here and I can actually change frequencies, flip the VFOs back and forth. But it, it kind of accomplishes as a supplement to the uh, the control pad because that way I can get close to it and then I can BFO without having to reach up to the to the radio. I'm doing it down below. So that's the approach that I've taken. I just wanted to share that with everybody. One of the things that happened when I first started qu uh, quizzing uh, Dave about the unit, I asked him what how he had his set up. And here's this kind of shows you um, his setup. And what he did is that he had this mode, he had the, this is sideband mode, it was all here, and he would just use it to change the bandwidths. And then on the next one, uh, on the data mode, he, again, he was using it to change the band modes, the bandwidth. So that's how he used it. But he also had a couple of buttons down here at the bottom uh, that gives his call, NK7Z, and then also 599, thank you. So he was actually using it for some of the contesting too. Another opportunity there. To program this, that was an interesting thing I had to learn a little bit about. They, they, in the manual, they give you a, a piece, a, a matrix. And the matrix is like on this box here, it has a, a letter and a number. Now the number actually is the number of the macro that you program into the P3 and this key would be the alpha or the letter. So this is an out. This letter here would be A. So when you hit it, you program it. And you say set A. So that's how we programmed it uh, using a um, a USB keypad or keyboard <laughs> that you basically plug it in to the back of the the P3, and that's how I program the the different macros in. Uh, the macros that are utilized in the, the P3 is the macros that, that LCraft uses with their gear. And it se seems to work pretty good. I did run across a couple things I did want to share when I was doing the programming because I wanted to double check to make sure that they all were, all the keys would work. I had to add a couple of places. I had found that I had to add some delay time into the controls. So when it sends a signal in, there'd be enough time for it to processing or whatever's going on inside the box to, to, uh, to work. And so I found a number of these, I had to go in and actually add some delays. And when I did that, then things just started really clicking right along. So that was really helpful. Like I, like I said, that they do have the the 48 and the 20, 24, so that is available. I bought this uh, for my, the firm is actually out of uh, Arizona down in the Phoenix area. So that was kind of the, the project on that one that, that I wanted to share. And again, the the macros are all literally from the stuff that Elcraft had put together and utilized by the users.